Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Utilizing Data in the Meat Industry to Create Better Business Outcomes, presented by Two Stone and supported by the analytics integration partner, Yellowfin. My name is Craig Thompson. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager for Yellowfin, and I'll be coordinating today's online event. Our hosts today, Two Stone, are a cloud business intelligence company that was founded in 2014 by Adam Sharp, Craig LaFoe, Chris Horn, and Mal Chamberon. Two Stone has since grown and grown and have partnered, has partnered with Yellowfin to deliver a range of industry-based solutions that enable any business to, uh, to become more data-driven to make better business outcomes. In today's webinar, you will learn how Two Stone create better business outcomes through the, through the utilization of data. I'm very excited to kick things off, but first, some housekeeping. Uh, on your screen display, you'll see a, a few different boxes. On the left side, you will see the media player, which has the speakers for today. Under that is the question boxes. In the center of your screen are the slides that you'll see for today's presentation. And in the right, some additional information on the speakers and some additional content that you can download. These boxes are all customizable for you to move around as you like. So please play around with it and uh, have the layout as you see fit. For questions, we encourage questions. We love questions. So please submit any questions you do have in the questions box and we'll answer them in a Q&A at the end of the event. Uh, there is also some additional information on the right hand side that contains some, like I said before, some content. There's a case study on today's discussion from, with GMP that's available for you to download, as well as some links to some websites. They'll also be sent post the event in a follow up confirmation. Uh, and finally, the webinar recording. So the, uh, the webinar, ha once the webinar has concluded, sorry, an, an on-demand link will be made available along with a white paper on the power of cloud BI within the meat industry. So that finishes up the housekeeping. Just quickly to the agenda, you will see the agenda on your screen, a brief discussion on the industry background, uh, the challenge that both the industry and Gundagai meat processes or GMP have faced, the solution that Two Stone found, a demonstration of the solution, and then finally some questions. Now I'd like to introduce you to the speakers today, Adam Sharp and Will Barton. Adam is the co-founder and service delivery manager of Two Stone. He has a wealth of experience in managing and managing the delivery of BI across several different industries and has developed a sophisticated knowledge of presenting data, enabling him to optimize any business's understanding of the data. Adam will be sitting down with Will Barton, who is the CEO of GMP. Uh, Adam has been working as CEO now for seven years and has quickly become a distinguished business business leader, being awarded, rewarded the, uh, the Murray River Arena Business Leader of the Year to, for the innovative expansion project that has created over 70 new full-time jobs and has increased GMP's production capacity by 70%. Will, Adam, it's great to, it's great to have you on board. Thank you so much for today. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Adam Sharp here. So, uh, first of all, a slight correction. I'm not the CEO of Gundagai Meats. Uh, certainly Will is. So, uh, for that faux pas, we'll, we'll kick off. But first of all, uh, I just wanted to personally uh, thank you, Will, for taking your, the time today. I mean, you are an extremely busy man and uh, your business is uh, doing some amazing and exciting things. So, to, to take the time today is uh, extremely generous of you. So, um, we're really excited to, to spend some time with Will today. Over the last couple of years, Two Stone has been doing some uh, pretty innovative things uh, around the use of data and uh, analytics uh, in uh, the, uh, the GMP business <clears throat> and by extension, the meat industry. So look, we thought it'd be uh, useful for, for the broader community in the industry just to sort of get some of the, uh, I guess, the benefit of some of that experience that, uh, that we've been through and certainly to hear Will's views on what it's meant for his business. So before we jump into the detail of exactly what has been done, we thought some background would be useful. So maybe, Will, you can just kick off by giving us some background on GMP's business. Yeah, sure. Um, and thanks, Adam, for the, the introduction. So we're a land processing business in Gundagai, New South Wales, pretty small town, about 2,000 uh, population. And we supply you know, major Australian supermarkets with retail ready and, and other sort of cuts for uh, their, their supermarkets as well as um, obviously a, a global lamb supply sort of chain that trades out commodities and other different products. Um, we've always been a, a fairly big part of the local community, but about sort of three or four years ago, we embarked on a, a really significant expansion project here 
which um, has increased the scale of our business quite significantly. And you know, now we're one of the biggest employers in the region with about 250 employees. So has your family always been involved in, in the business world? Yeah, look, we have. We've been here for a long time. My, my uncle Tony and, and my father Bill started the business in 1974, but their father Fred, my grandfather, actually started his butcher's apprenticeship in Gundagai in 1919. So we've been sort of in the meat industry for a bit over 100 years. I, I started my career, um, I worked in, in Melbourne and Sydney for the better part of you know 10 or 12 years in corporate agribusiness. I didn't really have um, a lot of intent to come back to this business, uh, but I came back about seven years ago as the CEO and I, I found that having worked in that corporate agribusiness space, I was valuing post-farm gate processing assets. So things like, um, the, you know, wineries that were being serviced by by you know primary production supply chains, and I found after a period of time, so I did almond hulling, walnut cracking, uh, you know wineries, dairies, all, all of these different processing facilities that were reliant on supply chains. And my my passion for that, um, and the insights that I was getting about how those businesses dealt with their supply base, and and the information that they were using and driving, and in, in some cases really sophisticated information, really sort of I guess little bit of a flame in me about what might be possible in the business that we're in now. And so that's sort of the, the journey that I embarked on about seven years ago when I came home. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, I, I guess then <laughs> clearly from your, your heritage, uh, from your family background in, in your business and your experience outside in, in the broader agribusiness industry, I mean, you know, what, what uh, you know, some of the, the background in the industry more generally in terms of some of the challenges it faces and opportunities? I think sort of historically and certainly as a, as a kid, kid growing up, it was very much a shovel and wheelbarrow kind of a, kind of a business. Um, and I think, I suppose, common with a lot of parts of, of agriculture, it was it's had a sort of foundation in, I guess, you know, hard work, physical labour, and, and I guess the grit and determination that was required to, um, to be successful in business, I think. Um, the focus of industry has been around the, the spread that you can create between buy and sell, so the, uh, the difference plainly between what you can buy livestock for and what you can sell meat for. And I think over the last sort of two or three decades, there's been an increasing focus on this make step, which is the, the part in between the buy and the sell, which is what we do here at the meat processing facility. And, and as margins become tighter, as global markets have lower costs to operate, have you know cheaper labour, less regulatory costs, we've really had to focus hard on making sure that that make step in the middle can be executed as efficiently as possible. Um, and so that's probably the big, I guess, challenge that the, the industry is facing now is how to make sure that um, we're as efficient as we can be. Um, sort of through that process and, and I guess for us a big ethos has been that you can't manage what you can't measure and so we've been on a more recent journey trying to focus on on the measurement of what's happening in our business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you found this change in the industry a challenge for GMP? I mean, what, what are some of the uh, specific issues you've faced more broadly, uh, you know, in this change in thinking? I think what, what we've realised, particularly through our expansion project, we've, we've spent um, somewhere in the order of 35 million increasing our plant capacity. We've got a lot of automation and robotics in our system, which the industry has been really, I think, class leading in terms of developing ways to reduce um, labour costs and increase efficiency. But we've got a lot of other systems that sit outside that sort of that automation and robotic space that are all geared to try to make us more efficient. So sort of collectively, I would call that the internet of things and the way that that's, um, I guess, become a big part of our business in the way that we collect data on a, on a number of fronts. If you told me seven years ago that all of our staff would be scanning in with a thumbprint um, uh, as a time and attendance system, I probably wouldn't have believed you, but that those kinds of technologies have become commonplace. And so what we find ourselves the position we find ourselves in now is that we've got a really data-rich plant 
we've got enormous ability to collect information across our plant, whether it's production information, down, you know, minutes of downtime, your recovery of co-products, which are a key value driver in our business, you know, yield, uh, attendance at, you know, and absenteeism. Um, and so we sort of got ourselves to a position where we've got this amazing ability to collect information, but we really sort of recognise that on its own it's not enough. We need to be able to get meaningful insights out of it. So that's kind of where our journey, I guess, started with you in many respects. Yeah, for sure. Well, I guess that's an opportunity for me then to sort of perhaps segue into the solution, I guess, is, is, is probably the broader term. Um, so we were able to work with you, obviously, through yourself and your, and your business subject matter experts and, and your various technology partners and so on. But you've really outlined a key, a key challenge, I guess, and in a lot of our clients face not only in the meat industry, but more broadly in industry you've got data in various systems and each system on its own performs a, a, a very specific and, and important and critical function, uh, particularly things like your meat processing system. You've obviously got your time and attendance systems you referenced. You've got your finance system, your accounting system, uh, your payroll system, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and, and of course, you've got lots of data in spreadsheets that sits in isolation and so on. So you're quite right. You've got data everywhere. So. The key challenge that we were, were tasked to overcome with uh, GMP was to then start to integrate all of those various data data sources together to do it in such a way that's automated, uh, it's seamless, so it doesn't require any human touch. Uh, and the, the vision was, and which is what's been delivered, is at the start of each business day, the business have been able to get a, a fully integrated platform, if you like, uh, of reports and, and dashboards that uh, that shows all the various key metrics where it integrates all those various data sets together. So, um, so look, really, you know, as, as Will's outlined, data is key. You, you know, you, you've got lots of systems out there generating critical information, but the ability to, with which to integrate all that data to drive decision-making capabilities, that's what really drives out the, the, the change in decision-making behaviour. So, Maybe before we get into, I, I'm planning on just showing a, qu a quick demo, which is entirely fictitious, by the way, just in the defence of Will and his business. We're not showing anything that's uh, confidential. But before we get into that, uh, Will, it'd be really interesting just to, to get your thoughts and your views on you know, what impact this platform has had so far on your business and certainly a view to where you see it going. I think sort of the, the immediate thing the immediate benefit to the business. We have a meeting every day at 10 o'clock where all of our managers are a stand-up meeting that goes for 10 minutes. Uh, we huddle around a whiteboard and we report out on certain elements of the business, um, you know, around safety, quality, people and development, and, and then finally productivity. And that, that productivity exercise was something that was, a, was an onerous exercise on a daily basis because we were pulling data. Um, you know, you had, a, you had floor managers who were trying to get across and make sure the time and attendance system had been sort of um, closed out from the night before. You had someone in finance sitting uh, in, in a pocket, pulling in various data that points into a spreadsheet, and then sort of checking and verifying that it was all that it all made sense. And invariably, sort of one minute before the ten o'clock stand-up meeting, someone would race down to the whiteboard with the answers, uh, and then so. And, but many mornings it wouldn't exist. So the, the the immediate impact was on being able to absolutely measure every day what had happened the day before mm. um, and driving a discipline for, for people to organise themselves around that that function and being able to see things like labour cost per unit accurately on a daily basis and, and the, the cost of, you know, cost per, labour cost per person per hour, um, uh, labour cost per carcass processed, all, all those kinds of insights were happening relatively quickly and accurately yeah. on a daily basis. So the key, the key is not just saving time for a few key resources. It's also about improving visibility of information as well. It is, and I, and I think like one of the learnings that certainly the big learnings that came out of that for us was that um, it, it's always smart people in businesses that can that can create solutions or fixes probably, but they don't address root cause. So you would. You would, we found ourselves, um, and I'm sure this is the same for a lot of businesses, 
that you would have someone really tricky or a few people that are really tricky and they have they create very quickly they create workarounds um, but what that did was it, it, it meant that the system was sort of fundamentally broken in areas um, and the discipline that was required to get these daily reports together has now meant for our business that people do things right the first time people understand yep. that when a data point is captured in a production system or in a time and attendance payroll finance whatever it is it needs to be put in in a way that can be easily read, interpreted, analysed by the two stone platform overnight. So that tomorrow morning, everything and and it, that takes a little bit of time. There's a bit of organisational kind of change in that, but because because the managers, it's it's kind of really obvious quite quickly that that stitching time does save nine because what happens is they're in this business where. They're coming in in the morning and they're not facing, um, you know, a scramble to get data together for the 10 o'clock. They're actually just making sure everything's squared away before they leave in the afternoon. It's five minutes yeah. and it's, it's there and ready to go the next morning. It's a fascinating observation, Will, that uh, we often see with, with other clients as well, that uh, the visibility, of it, the accuracy of information drives a behaviour to make sure that it's accurate in the first place. And all of the efficiencies that uh, aren't necessarily obvious but flow from that are quite, are quite substantial. So, uh, fabulous well, insights. So they are, and I think probably the other thing that we realised was that we come from a position of, um, of an absence of sort of that data um, in terms of its, its 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 accessibility and the analysis behind it, and then when you yeah. start to get the data, you very quickly realise that poor data is actually worse than no data. So you then quickly move to make sure the data's good, and then all of a sudden you end up in a situation where you're managing things like absenteeism much better because you have accurate daily time, you know, that timely data to say this is how are we moving the needle, are we not, and that sort of stuff. Mm. Well, look, this, this might be a good point with which to segue into a just a quick demonstration of, a, of a, an example uh, of, of the, the solution that's been developed for you. I, I will reiterate, this is a fictitious uh, view of, of the solution that's been developed for, uh, for Gundagai and Meats. The other thing is uh, it's an entirely configurable and customizable platform. Um, so by no means does this show a, a fixed state uh, that the layout, the visualizations and so on are entirely and fully customizable. So specifically for, for the GNP solution, uh, this was the specific uh, uh, solution that, uh, that we landed on. So what we've got, just very quickly, I'm not going to labour this too much, but as you, as you heard earlier, one of the key inputs that, that, Will's, that Will outlined was, was moving from the traditional spread of buy, sell of lamb to now being, uh, it's critical to, to be able to track you know, your, your margin and key, key to, to margin. Is, uh, is obviously uh, labour costs. Now, labour costs are a function of uh, production output and uh, divided by your, your cost of labour to get your per unit cost of production. The per unit cost of production are a massive driver in terms of profitability or margin generally in the industry. So uh, this, this is now giving the GMP folks, as Will said, an automated uh, every day at the start of each business day uh, when they run their, their daily production meetings in the morning, uh, they're able to review this and, and look at it quite extensively, uh, extensive level of detail. Uh, earlier on, I mentioned too, in terms of the, the large number of data sets or data points that are being drawn to, to generate this. So we've got here our production data at the top. So we understand what we produced in terms of headcount yesterday, broken down by the various production types. Our headcounts, so how many units of labour, if you like, were involved? Uh, in, in that day's production. How many of them were absent? Now, as I understand, absenteeism in the industry is a massive cost, a massive uh, driver of inefficiency. So it's very important that, uh, that absenteeism is tracked and, and therefore able to be managed. Uh, we've got obviously our hours of, of labour uh, and, and broken down into overtime. So are we, are we efficiently using our labour? Are we moving into overtime or not? Uh, and then obviously we get into the costs. So our labour costs is, uh, is, is coming in from our payroll system. So all in all, we're, we're bringing all of this together to ultimately get down to our total cost of production, units of production. So what we're able to do now is to start to see with great detail by day, 
um, depending on the particular realm or range of dates that we're looking at, we can start to now drill into a particular day of interest and so on. So we would be coming in, we'd be looking at the previous day's uh, production numbers uh, and making sure that we're able to identify what those particular uh, anomalies are, if any. So for example, I can drill in, I'm just going to randomly select a day. I'm going to jump in first of all to our production uh, numbers. So this is what we produced yesterday on that particular date that I selected. Uh, these are our particular uh, cuts and by different carcass types and so on. Uh, and further to that, we can also drill into our labour detail. So this is where Will and his team are able to drill right down, down to the end. Again, this is all fictitious data, so don't worry about showing anything that's uh, confidential. And we're now down into the individual employee uh, themselves, hours, costs, overtime, non-overtime, direct costs, indirect costs, any bonuses paid. Uh, and so on. Ultimately, down the bottom, we've got the day's total labour cost that, that is able to be then fed back into our overall metrics there. A key thing we've got our flagged here, so we can highlight, you know, red, green, and so on, uh, areas of interest. These off site employees, if you like, are those that are deemed to be absent. So, absenteeism, as I said, is a key driver of uh, efficiency or inefficiency in the industry. So, being able to understand who is, is there a consistent employee or particular category or particular days that are, that are driving absenteeism. So, understanding what's driving that and, and being able to then obviously manage that accordingly. So, that, that now gives us, as I said, at the start of each day, the team are able to very, um, in, a, in a detailed way, uh, drive informed discussions and make decisions based on that. There's no manual intervention in this. It's all automated, the interfacing from the production system, the payroll system, the time and attendance system to generate all of these key metrics. Obviously, we can visualise the data as well to see trends, to see whether you're trending in the right or the wrong way, uh, and so on. And another quick, uh, quick uh, example of the sorts of things that we can start to look at for the business are, uh, we'll, we'll mention secondary product production. So that's all of the, in the industry, uh, the non-meat products, I guess. So things like offal, uh, livers, hearts, kidneys, and so on. And a key thing is understanding, uh, are, we, are we harvesting, for want of a better word, uh, to the maximum opportunity that we have available to us? And when we're not harvesting, that's, that constitutes a lost opportunity. So we can start to say, right, what's our lost opportunity? Are we missing out on revenue? From our, from our uh, secondary products. And we can see here, we can drill in and we can see right out this particular day, we have a target of harvesting 80% of our kidneys, but in this particular day, we only actually harvest 61%. So that's a, in this example, a lost opportunity of $200. Not big dollars, but on mass, that starts to add up. Now, this is, this is the sort of way of, of premiumizing, if you like, maximizing the return on your production to make sure that, uh, that we are tracking the opportunities that we have there. And if we're not calling that out and giving the business the opportunity to, to see that and, and react accordingly. So that's really the extent of the demo. As I said, fully automated, integrated solution with the production system, the time and attendance system, the payroll system, and the finance system in order to produce an automated daily KPI uh, series of reports and dashboards for the business. So off the back of that, Will, um, it would be interesting to, you know, to understand and, and hear your thoughts on some of the benefits, if you like, that that's really brought to the business up to now. Yeah, look, I, I think something just occurred to me as you've been talking about that, Adam, and that, and that was about the journey and where we started. Um, and this is a little bit off topic, but I, I think it's really important. We're, we often describe ourselves as the, um, in terms of the scale of our business, as the as the biggest little plant and the and the smallest large plant in terms of scale and industry. And I, in this role over seven years, my my sort of I guess predisposition to analyse data and, and gain insights and, and desire to be kind of at the pointy end of those things. Um, uh, sort of meant that I, I often agonised over whether the business needed an ERP or, uh, um, you know, some sort of, or, or was there a system we were using at the moment that needed to be scaled out and made bigger? So should we get our finance system to to do some of the functions that, that we're using? Um, I guess 
two, the two stone solution to do now. And, and it really was something in my role as CEO that, that I found difficult to solve because this question mark was always there around, like we're not big enough to justify a full ERP system. There wasn't an obvious leader in our, in the systems we were using uh, to collect, collect data through our uh, plant that, that allowed us to, to gain the sort of insights um, that we wanted to gain. And, and what's been a little bit remarkable, um, and this doesn't mean you, you can start charging me more, Adam, but it's how <laughs> sort of cost, cost effective this solution has been. So we've been able to, and, and, and we kind of, at, 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 we got to a point where we're just going to jump in and have a go at this. And I'm really glad we did because what it has done is genuinely capture information from all of our systems. And it hasn't created another big system or some big beast that we've got we've now got to manage. It's not become its own kind of thing to manage, if you like, which is which I think an ERP could become. It's been something that's just um, you know quite quietly and efficiently going doing what it's designed to do and pulling data sort of together for us. And I think that's kind of something that would have been really obvious. When I cast my mind back to sort of the why, that's been a really interesting sort of part of the journey for us. Um, I, I think obviously there's the stuff you talk to, like absenteeism, that, that we've clearly gained benefit out of. Um, anyone in this business will know that the margins are extremely tight and will know the importance of um, what we call co-product recovery. So that's the things you talk to, offals, uh, all sorts of products that, that aren't the primary focus of the exercise, but are, um, are byproducts or co-products of that, of that primary flow of product. And so our ability to be able to draw insights daily, so we have our conversations with, with managers to say, why did we only, if we had a target of recovering 90% of those products, why did we recover 70%? We can very quickly identify whether that was an animal health related issue, whether there was a machine that broke down, whether there was some other reason that, that we lost product but also being able to tie it instantly to a dollar value, a revenue value, so that they're, the floor manager not only understands themselves, but they can use that as a tool to communicate because it's not about, um, we're not a business that sort of goes crooked people for getting things wrong. We're more of a business that says, right, this is what happened. This was the impact of it. Now powered with that information and understanding how important it is, let's do our best not to let it happen again. And so those kinds of tools and insights in that conversation is is much, you know, if you have that if you have that conversation a week later, we've forgotten why the machine broke down, you know, we've we've forgotten what the what the events were that surrounded it. Whereas if you're, you know, if you've got a cleaner that doesn't do the right job overnight and the machine can't start because it's delayed by an hour the following morning, and that leads to a, you know, being able to instantly define that that lost you, you know, twelve hundred dollars in red awful recovery because of the delay means that it, while it's still fresh in your own mind, we've had, a, we've had a conversation about the impact, we all understand it and we're working towards solving it. And I think often in business, if that, if that work isn't quick enough, then you lose the momentum or you lose the opportunity to have the, the conversation. Yeah. The activity. So, so time, time really has that, a, timeliness just, of information. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think the other thing, which is the other benefit, which I guess is a bit, um, which is less on that daily curve. And I know I've spoken to you about this before because you helped me run these customizable reports from time to time that aren't part of our dashboard. But, you know, we we tender a product which is called mixed ovine material that, that's generated from, from the business. And it's a bulk product which is sold by the um, tongue. And I'm constantly looking for the best way to predict the weight of that. And historically, we used to do it on a dollar per carcass basis. And then we, and then for a period of time, um, I sort of had a working theory that I was more closely correlated with not the number of carcasses, but the weight of those carcasses. And so I, I would sort of pester once a quarter in a hurry as the tender was closing, I'd go to our finance manager and say, quick, I need you to pull together the data on weight and carcass numbers, as well as, you know, this, that, and the other client type um, and do a bit of analysis. And for the first four times I did that, I would derail her morning. Um, and distract her from whatever that you know she should have been doing to do this analysis for me. After a period of time, 
she would start to say, oh, I've, I've still got that spreadsheet from the last time I did it. And then she would go and uh, hunt that down. And then she'd realise that the person that, that usually kept that secondary spreadsheet that fed into her spreadsheet had left and that, that hadn't been updated for, you know, 10 weeks. And so she had to go back and do that. And so that was the lived experience of those things. Now, um, I'm, I'm almost smart enough to do it myself. I still probably call you and say, Adam, if I wanted to if I wanted to get production numbers and production weights by client over the last six months and see if there's a correlation and, and sort of five minutes later we've pulled those those elements into uh, something that just crunches the data and tells us the answer and then we save it so I can come back to it as a report. Um, and so the time that that frees up in the business understanding that you've gone to the single source of truth, which is our, which is the, the, the data that we hold for two stone to get that answer is taking all that distraction away that by my own admission I would cause at the last minute every quarter. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's massive. That's massive for a business and for people in those roles that are, you know, that are trying to respond to those requests. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally appreciate that. And, uh, that's that's interesting. So look, uh, conscious of time, Will, but uh, maybe just as a last parting thought, where do you see this evolving for your business, um, this concept uh, for your business, and perhaps even the broader industry? Um, well, I think it, it's definitely changed our business already in terms of the way that we 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 think and the way that we collect information and, and use information. I think it's already created behavioural change in our in our management team. I mean, it's helping them to be able to explain the challenges and explain you know the the, the metrics to to their teams, to supervisors, to people on the floor. We um, I think it's probably important to say we don't think it'll replace the whiteboard. We're we're big fans at a plant level of of getting people in teams and managers and supervisors to write results on a whiteboard so that everyone can see them and the, and the physical practice and the tangible kind of element of writing a result on a board is still something very important to us. So it doesn't replace, we're not going to get 27 computer screens that publish the two stone reports. We're using that, all of the analytics um, that, that that platform brings to us to be able to have the results at hand so that we can write them up without having to spend 30 minutes beforehand. But I think that that ability to do those things quickly is driving that behavioural change already. I think for industry, like we know, um, and there's always a, a part of you when you get onto something really good like this that says maybe you shouldn't share it. Um, we sort of can't help ourselves a bit from an industry point of view. We've always been people that have embraced sort of innovation and change and tried to do things. Um, you know well and differently and, and I think for industry as a whole the ability to be able to track those those elements that we talked around around co-products or yield or without having to upend the entire system is really important because I, one of the challenges for industry when it looks at new technology is how deployable it is or how how easily it will be to I guess commercialize so you might have a new robot and you get to the end of that journey and realise that the top five processes in Australia have the volume and the, and the balance sheet to, to deploy that, and everybody else doesn't benefit from the efficiencies that come from that machine, whereas this is something that pretty much at whatever scale of business you have can, can draw very complex or really simple and insightful, um, I guess, um, results for you to look at every day. So I think... The, the nature of it is being, it, it doesn't require you to, you know, carry out any fundamental change in your business. It's just something that can gather information, give you meaningful outsides. And, and for industry, I think that means that we can remain competitive on the global scale because we're, we're able, you know, we've got good, good data and good, good insights to be able to actually execute on. Um, and I think really for, for all businesses, that, that are looking for that solution without having to upend their whole system or switch to an ERP or change their finance or their production system, which most people are comfortable with. Um, I just think it's a, a really simple solution for that kind of challenge, I guess I'd say, yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, look, 
Thank you, Will, uh, again. Um, we might at this point throw back to Craig just to see if there are any questions out there and uh, we'll take a moment and uh, we'll wrap shortly. Awesome. Thank you, guys. That was a really, really insightful conversation. And throughout the course of your conversations, the questions that have come in, you guys have managed to answer all around maybe looking at different industries that this could be applicable to. What are the next steps for GMP? Um, but one of the one of the key kind of themes that have come through is around absenteeism. And, and Will and Adam, I know you both spoke to it in the demonstration, and Will, you did um, earlier. But Will, has um, in terms of abs absenteeism, can you go into maybe a little bit more information as of how this solution has directly impacted your absenteeism as a workforce without giving away too much of your IP, of course? No, that, 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 that's fine. I think, um, you know, there's, there's the actual uh, outcome of, of the simplest thing being just, you know, being able to measure something and then as a result of measuring it, everyone's looking at it and so you're paying attention to it, which is what kind of well documented as a, as a concept. Uh, you know, in some respects, it goes back to the absolute 101, which is, um, and this is a journey that Adam had a fair bit of involvement with and, and can be a frustrating part of rolling something like this out. But you sit down as a business and you say, okay, we're going to track um, attendance or absenteeism, whichever way you look at it. And the first thing that happens is that the um, floor managers only um, care about how many people had a pair of gum boots on standing on a chain. The right. HR department um, really just wants to know who was supposed to be here that didn't show up. And the finance department wants to know who they're paying for. And so you have instantly you have this thing where you go, well, what is it? What's attendance? What's absentees? What's the cost of it? What are the different categories that it sits into? And the simple discipline of having to say, we need to define this and we need to create a formula that calculates it, gives you the ability to actually sort of unpack the, the challenge in your business more directly. So you have to sit down and say, well, are we going to count, um, you know, long-term workers' compensation? Are we going to count someone that's on maternity leave? Are we, you know, how are we going to count the cost of these different elements of our business? What are we going to do when someone's sick on Monday, but then, which is unplanned, but then we know that they're not going to be here for the rest of the week? And how does the, the, the impact on direct costs versus the impact on management around absenteeism discipline if it's required or conversations that need to happen or all of those things sort of typically get pushed into a too hard basket or poorly defined or you know like they're very I guess they're very challenging things to manage whereas if you can get the kind of data set that tells you um, gives you insights into um, the frequency and allows you to I guess, find out if it's always a Monday for an individual or all that sort of stuff. In some parts, that's, um, that's, that's something that, that I guess some time and attendance or, or payroll systems can, can do. But then for us, we can also look, you know, if you, if you picture those spark lines in the, in the, um, in the, in the demo that Adam showed, for us, we would look back on a day and we'd say, wow, we had, um, we had a huge spike in absenteeism that day. And then we can look at the, the labour cost per unit and we can say, that's interesting, it didn't really impact on our productivity on that day. Or when it gets over a certain point, then it actually slows you down incredibly. Because one of the other challenges you have as a business is that sometimes if you have uh, a higher than expected rate of absenteeism, your business actually appears to be performing particularly well. Because if you've got, if you're able to, knock out the same production with less people. At first sort of blush, you might look at it and say, well, we're, we're actually, we don't need those people. <laughs> we're still, edu you know, we're still executing daily. But what you find is that you're not training and other things are slipping. If you're on demand, um, you might have challenges around quality or you might find that, and, and the other interesting thing for us is that we would then look at co-product recovery. Um, and my apologies for people that aren't in the industry, but two of the things that we collected as sheep, tongues and ears. Um, and those are the two of the things that we stop collecting when we don't have enough resources to collect them. So the ability to be able to look at something and say, well, our labour cost per unit was really good those days because we had five casuals that were away and we didn't pay wages for them. But then to be able to quickly say, ah, but we didn't recover ears or tongues, which means that that created a revenue shortfall. Like they're the insights around um, 
I guess, absenteeism and its impact on the business. And the ability to have those conversations as part of the normal suite of conversations that you're having with managers, as we sort of talked about before, in real time to say this is what happens when, you know, even this is what happens when you've got two more people on annual leave than we all agreed you would. Um, and then you have an absenteeism event or a sick leave event that then compounds that issue. And so those, yeah, that, that's kind of, I hope that provides a bit more detail on, on what the absenteeism piece looks like. Yeah, I think it definitely did. I think you also um, kind of hit the nail on the head as well around like other internal metrics and kind of KPIs as well. And another question that has come out is once the solution was implemented, like how long did it take for you to see a positive impact on the KPIs that you've set with it that you had already set within the business? I think um, that's really tricky because we were, we were obviously, we were on a journey of improvement um, in terms of, and we needed a system that could could move with us at the same pace we were moving. Yeah, I would say instant. I would say instantly, but there are a lot of things that are that are feeding into that. What I would say is that we couldn't do without the system. Now we would we would take a we would step back very quickly. I imagine there's a there's a large part of our business, our daily focus, that, that relies on this information to tell us how we're tracking, whether we need to adjust, whether we're on the right track. So for us, I mean, it's been a, I would say instantly on account of the fact that people knew exactly what was happening and they started to be empowered to, um, to I guess, to, to, to make decisions that maybe previously they had to ask a commercial manager or a finance manager or somebody for an insight that took, you know, 10 days to get, and then they would make a decision to change something. Now they just do it straight away because they know the answers and they yep. can see the impact. So that behaviour started straight away um, for us as a business because there was an absence of it prior to it. So it became, that became sort of a, a quite a quick thing. I think that's the thing, like it's the more the behaviors, I guess, uh, are the things that you see that the instant changing rather rather than the KPI metrics. It's the having that access to the data which influences their behavior. Um, Adam, that's um, pretty much it for the questions. Like I said, we, we managed to answer a lot of them around kind of the next steps and um, what the direct impact was throughout the conversation, which is great to see. So I'll hand back over to you for the final words. Thanks, Craig. Listen, I, I will say again, and I said it at the start, but uh, we are genuinely and sincerely grateful, Will, for your time today. Uh, I hope the folks on the on the webinar got a lot out of this. Um, obviously, we're we're keen for uh, for you to have heard what we did for for GMP, but but honestly and specifically GMP's experience and, and the benefits of Will's insights, I think, are just on their own uh, worthy of the time. So. Thank you, uh, Will. And um, for those that are interested, there is going to be a recording, as Craig said. Uh, so we'll follow up with everybody who has attended uh, with links to the various uh, webinar uh, documentation, recordings and so on, uh, and white papers. But again, Will, thanks for your time. And uh, I hope everyone present uh, found it useful. Have a good day.